Thanks for joining us this afternoon. UCO's Move the Needle campaign has itched for 6% since the last update. The campus now stands at 30% vaccinated. At least 50% of the student body must be vaccinated for UCO to start extending fall break. Students have until October 1st to report their vaccination status, and UCO says even if you submit it in the spring or summer, you still need to submit it once again. U Central Zach Carter has more on how students are reacting to the Move the Needle campaign. With the Move the Needle campaign only at 30%, only 10 days remaining until the October 1st deadline, I'm on campus asking students if they think they'll see an extended fall break. Um, I don't think that UCO will hit the 50% vaccination mark by the deadline that we have currently. Um, yeah, I believe so. I feel like a lot of people are vaccinated. It's just about letting people know that, you know, you have to register for it. So I do not think UCO is doing enough marketing for the campaign because I know so many students are confused on it or think that their report that they did last semester counts for this semester. I haven't, I mean, I've heard like word of mouth about uh, vaccination sites on campus. I think if we did more of that and then more advertisements about it, like maybe send out more emails, I think it would help a lot of students. We do more things around like put up signs and things, you know, around campus, just so people can see it and like do it while they're walking. There are two more on campus vaccine clinics this week on Thursday and Friday, and then on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week in Edmond. Zach Carter, U Central News. Right now on campus, UCO says it has 53 active cases and 1,068 recoveries. The university has seen over 1,100 cases since August of last year. And the State Department of Health is reporting 484 new cases across the state today, a sharp decrease from recent numbers. This brings the total number of active cases to over 16,000. Over 1,500 Oklahomans are hospitalized with the virus. 145 are in the ICU. And Johnson & Johnson says a two-dose version of its vaccine is 94% effective against symptomatic infection. This makes the vaccine comparable to both the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. J&J's chief science officer says while the single-dose vaccine is strongly effective, the booster dose further increases protection against the virus. Senator James Lankford is calling on President Biden to reverse his policy on vaccine mandates. The senator sent a letter to the president outlining his concerns on the mandates. Lankford says he believes the vaccine is safe, but that getting it should be a choice. And Courtney, I don't know about you, but I am totally enjoying this fall weather. Could we see maybe some of this weather coming into the week, or do you think the temperatures will increase? I was a little shocked this morning when I felt like I needed a jacket today, actually, when I saw those cooler temps. And I will have you know, going forward, we will be seeing some of those temperatures sticking around in Edmond, but for the most part, looks like we will be possibly returning to those highs in the 90s. But today, 81 degrees, sunny, not a cloud in the sky. So nice breeze, about 20 miles per hour coming out of the north. It's been a beautiful day out there. Get outside, Broncos. Tomorrow, though, is the first day of fall. I'm so excited for that. Like I said, we've gotten a little taste of that so far this morning. We'll, we'll be seeing a little bit of that throughout the rest of the week. And then we'll see some sunny skies all throughout the week. And then we'll see maybe possibly if these cool temperatures are going to be sticking around. Across the state, Mostly highs in the mid to high 70s. We're seeing some low 80s across the southern part of the state. 82 in Ardmore, 83 in Lawton, 80 in OKC, 72 in Woodward, 74 in Guymon. Stick around. I will have more for you in my seven-day forecast later in the show. Back to you, Tyler. Thanks, Courtney. The Melton Gallery on campus is currently hosting a women's rights exhibit. The exhibit in the gallery will run until November 18th. Essentials Eden Jones took a deeper look in the artwork. The UCO College of Art and Design held an opening reception for a new exhibition titled Women's Rights or Human Rights last Thursday at the Melton Gallery on campus. Curated by Professor Elizabeth Resnick from the Massachusetts College of Art and Design, this exhibition is designed to highlight women, non-binary, non-gender conforming, and genderqueer social justice advocates and fighters of all backgrounds. Gallery Director Veronica Chanfrano said there was a very specific reason she jumped at the opportunity to help create this exhibition. And we wanted specifically to highlight 
people that do not typically appear in history books. So women of color, um, people, LGBTQ individuals, uh, non-binary, gender non-conforming, like these are, these are people who have contributed to gender equity throughout history but have been largely erased from what we learn. In addition to large format posters, the exhibition included a zine making station and a zine library where visitors are invited to make small homemade magazines and let their creativity fly. Zines, in my lifetime anyway, have been a great way to get your voice heard without having to go through any gatekeepers, without having to be censored, without, you know, you don't need much money to make a zine. Um, and you can have a really big impact. The exhibition will be open until November 18th, and anyone is encouraged to continue visiting to learn more about it. My hope is that people come back and stay a while to give all the information a chance to kind of reach them and sink in. Chianfano believes the message of this exhibition will lead others to discover their own empowerment. It can feel overwhelming when you are oppressed, and it can feel like there's no way out. And it's just not true. Like if you keep saying what you believe in and join forces with other people who believe in it too, it's, it's really empowering to know that that has worked. It has worked and it can work again. In Edmond, Eden Jones, U Central News. A Solution Spirit program is here in the Oklahoma City Metro. It is designed for organizations to present breakthrough ideas, develop creative situations, and to grow engagement environment as well. The section will be going on through October 4th, 6th, 11th, and 13th, and is located in the UCO Santa Fe Plaza. And the Fall Career and Internship Fair is coming up next Wednesday. This event is open to students to learn about internship opportunities. Business wear is strongly recommended, but the UCO closet will be open if needed. You can bring student IDs for stellar credit. After 50 years, the Kicking Bird Golf Club's clubhouse comes down. The City of Edmond says while the building is part of many great memories, the new clubhouse will be even better. Renovations will continue for over a year. In a week, Edmond Electric and Urban Forestry and the Arbor Day Foundation will allow you to reserve one of their 234 free trees. This is part of their energy saving tree program. Online maps will also be included. Trees will be available for pickup on September 30th and October 1st at Bickham Rudkin Park. World leaders returned to the United Nations gathering for the first time in the pandemic era. At the General Assembly, President Biden spoke on climate change, the Afghanistan war and COVID-19. We stand, in my view, at an inflection point in history. And I'm here today to share with you how the United States intends to work with partners and allies to answer these questions. President Biden also pledged to double U.S. financial aid to poorer countries to help switch to cleaner energy. And the disappearance of Gabby Petito, a 22-year-old woman who went missing after a cross-country road trip Today, the FBI is investigating the area around the home of Petito's fiance, Brian Laundrie, after he was reported missing by his parents Friday. His parents have stated that they think he went out to the reserve to meditate. Laundrie is a person of interest after Petito's body was believed to be found Sunday at a Wyoming National Park. The FBI is still examining the DNA to confirm. Petito was reported missing on September 11th, 10 days after laundry had allegedly returned to Florida. The case is still ongoing. We will keep you updated as the story develops. And coming up, I'll detail your full weather forecast. Stick around. Connect to innovation. Connect to creativity. Connect to opportunities. To friendship. <laughs> connect to all this and more when you connect to Central. A star filled sky makes your dreams go wild in a place that beckons the heart of a child. 
Feel your journey begin as adventure takes flight, where the light beams all day and dances at night. A new place to meet meets a roar of thunder, and sounds fill the air in the land of wonder, and joyous expression meets boundless laughter, or perhaps peace and quiet if that's what you're after. Travelok.com is for the young at heart. Come see for yourself where memories start. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. continues to transform Oklahoma City with the opening of the new Scissor Tail Park, more trails and sidewalks, and more to come. Our city just keeps getting better. This is now a place we all want to live. Learn more at VelocityOKC.com. Welcome back and thank you for tuning in to this U Central weather update. Right now it is currently 81 degrees in Edmond, sunny, not a cloud in the sky, north winds coming at 21 miles per hour and the humidity currently at around 20%. If you haven't had the chance to go outside today, please go out, take a five minute walk. You'll feel better afterwards, I promise. First day of fall tomorrow, very excited about that, hoping to see some leaves falling, some trees looking nice and beautiful, some fall colors, some sunny skies. We will be seeing continuing throughout the week, but will these cooler temperatures be sticking around? Across the state right now, we're seeing highs mainly in the mid to high 70s, low 80s, 82 in Ardmore, 80 in Oklahoma City. Looking westward, we see those low 20s, 72 in Woodward, 74 in Guymon. For your low tonight, 52 degrees, so it's going to be a pretty cool night this evening. It will also be carrying over into our morning tomorrow. We will see the wind subside a little bit to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Still no chance of rain though as well. Lows across the state, mid to high 40s mostly across the state, 52 in Ardmore, 51 in McAllister, 49 in Eden, and then 54 in Oklahoma City as the low for this evening. Tomorrow highs, like I said, very similar to what we saw today, mid to high 70s, low 80s, going to be 79 in Oklahoma City, 78 in Tulsa, 78 in Woodward, 82 down here in Altus, and then 81 in Lawton. So we'll be seeing very similar temperatures to what we saw today sticking around tomorrow. As you get your day start in the morning, if you have class or work in the morning, it's going to be cool. 55 degrees in the morning. We'll see those temperatures rise to about 72 throughout the afternoon. And then as you go into your evening, 72 as well. The state fair is still going on through the rest of the week. So today, tomorrow, probably going to be a good chance to go out and see that as well. Your seven day forecast, look at that sunny skies throughout the next seven days. No chance of rain so far yet predicted going into the end of this week. High of 81 today, high of 78 tomorrow. And then we see these temperatures begin to rise again back into the high 80s and then a high of 91 on Monday. That's all I have for you right now. We'll get you back to the desk. Thanks, Courtney. And after the break, Aaron has updates on UCL golf, soccer, and more. So stay tuned.
Sometimes, the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! back and change it all. I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back and change I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision... Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah! Invent... Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. In the land of wonder and awe, you won't believe you see what you saw. Where there's something to do for young and for old, where stories are written and then they're retold. Visit TravelOK.com today. Come see for yourself and come out to play. Welcome back, Bronco fans. I'm Aaron Gelvin, and this is your sports update. The UCO men's golf team took place in the uh, NSU Classic yesterday, as Evan Griffith has put himself among the individual leaders and paced the Broncos after day one of play. Griffith shot a 138, while UCO as a team shot a 574. Final round play began today, and we'll have updates of the results tomorrow in sports. UCO's women's golf team took place in the DBU tournament this week, where they placed in 16th in the 19-team event. Susana Oliveras had the best Bronco score of the day with 75, while Madison Odell also broke 80 as she scored a 77. The team as a whole shot a final round score of 314, and their score for the entire tournament was 925. The team returns to action on October 4th and 5th when they host the Grace Shin Memorial Classic at the Golf Club of Edmond. And the UCO women's soccer team tied Newman 2-2 in a non-conference matchup over the weekend. The match went into double overtime and spanned 110 minutes as the game finished in a draw, despite UCO outshooting Newman 25-5. The Lady Broncos are now 3-2-1 and one on the season, and UCO will play its final non-conference game of the season against Rogers State this Friday. The UCO football team takes on second-ranked Northwest Missouri on Saturday in Week 3 action. Central Oklahoma is currently 1-2 and two on the season and will face a tall task against a stingy Northwest Missouri defense that has allowed just 79 rushing yards per game and seven points per game through their first two contests. The Bearcat offense has been excellent running the football and has scored 31 points per game so far this season. 
The Broncos will look to cut down turnovers and force more opponent giveaways as they attempt to pull the road upset on Saturday afternoon. And if you're heading to the Paycom Center to catch a Thunder game this upcoming season, the team has announced health and safety protocols for the start of the year. All guests will be required to show proof of full or partial COVID-19 vaccination or a negative test taken within 72 hours prior to the game. The team is also strongly encouraging masks and the NBA is expected to impose additional requirements for fans sitting in courtside areas. These policies will be in effect through at least the first 12 games of the regular season and the entire preseason. In college football action, the Oklahoma Sooners Athletic Department has apologized after long concession lines on Saturday's win over Nebraska had fans upset. Hundreds of fans were waiting for food and drinks due to understaffed concession stands during the game. This resulted in Cornhusker and Sooner fans alike missing large chunks of the action if they decided to stay in line instead of going back up to their seats. Athletic Director Joe Castiglione apologized on social media and told fans he appreciated their patience and understanding at this time. And finally, Week 2 action in the NFL wrapped up last night as the Green Bay Packers hosted their division rivals, the Detroit Lions, on Monday Night Football. Green Bay was looking to bounce back after an abysmal, abysmal performance in Week 1, and they got back into the win column in a big way, using, using an explosive second half to knock off the Lions 35-17. Packers running back Aaron Jones was the star as he scored four touchdowns in the big win. The Packers improved to 1-1 one one on the young season, while the Lions fell to 0-2. That's all the time we have for today. Head to broncosports.com for more news, scores, and updates as we send it back to you at the desk. Thanks, Aaron. And then we will also have some more weather updates coming up after the break as well. Stay tuned. say and make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! do want to share some breaking news. The FBI says autopsy results confirm the remains found in Wyoming are those of 22-year-old Gabby Petito. The FBI says her death was ruled as a homicide. Petito disappeared while on a cross-country road trip with her fiance, who is now being sought by authorities. And I also have a little bit of update for the weather this week. We have been seeing some fall temperatures and the first official day of fall is tomorrow. I do have our seven day forecast over here on the wall. 
So for the highs tomorrow, 78 degrees, 85 on Thursday, as we can see sunny skies throughout the whole week. 87 on Saturday as the high, 89 on Sunday, and then 91 on Monday. So we are possibly seeing a bit of those warmer temperatures that we thought we might have gotten rid of and we thought fall was coming and here to stay. We are beginning to see those temperatures rise once again into the rest of the week. Tomorrow as you head out, it is going to be a cooler morning, 55 degrees in the morning, 72 through the noon, and then 72 this evening. Thank you all for tuning in to this edition of U Central News. We will be seeing some cooler temperatures this Halloween is just around the corner. Yes, that's right. Trick or treating festivities in Edmond are scheduled on Saturday, September or October 30th. And I'm just I'm excited for these cooler temperatures. Even though they're supposed to raise back up, I hope they eventually drop because I'm ready for spooky season. I'm ready for my pumpkin spice and everything nice. Yes. Do you have any ideas of what your Halloween costume is going to be? I'm going to be Scooby-Doo. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to be Velma actually. That's I'm so excited for Halloween this year. I know I'm hoping those fall temperatures really get us nice and ready right. as well. Right. I'm totally ready. I'm ready for all of the fall weather. I hope the leaves start changing soon, but who knows, we might be experiencing this higher temperatures. I know. I'm also hoping we get an extended fall break as well. Do not forget about the Move the Needle campaign Broncos. Well, that's all we have for today's edition of U Central News. I'm Courtney Hall. And I'm Tyler Whitehead. Connect to creativity. Connect to opportunities. Connect to friendship. <laughs> connect to all this and more when you connect to Central. A star-filled sky makes your dreams go wild in a place that beckons the heart of a child. Feel your journey begin as adventure takes flight, where the light beams all day and dances at night. A new place to meet meets a roar of thunder, and sounds fill the air in the land of wonder. And joyous expression meets boundless laughter, or perhaps peace and quiet if that's what you're after. TravelOK.com is for the young at heart. Come see for yourself where memories start. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. continues to transform Oklahoma City with the opening of the new Scissor Tail Park, more trails and sidewalks, and more to come. Our city just keeps getting better. This is now a place we all want to live. Learn more at velocityokc.com.